Hey, what's up guys? Spencer here and welcome back to another episode of Insider Carpentry. In this video, I'm going to show you something you may not have ever seen before. It's a method to cut down, cut off the bottoms of doors without actually removing the door using a track saw. So hope you enjoy the video. We'll dive right in. So let me just give you a quick run through of this system. You've got two pieces to this clamp that mounts on the bottom, your Festool guide rail, or I'm not sure if this works with other guide rails. This is made by Festool, so obviously it's gonna work with Festool. It's got a cam action lever that will tighten itself down after it's inserted. There we go. So then to lock it down, you just twist the lever you can locate that anywhere on the track. Now you have your trigger mechanism here, which you can slide and lock down, and then you squeeze the trigger, which will adjust this piece here, and then to release this piece here, after you tighten it, you just pull up this back piece. So that's pretty easy. I should probably do a little sanding on this. It's pretty tight on my track, but uh, it works It works good. I found that just kind of leaving the trigger mechanism in the same spot and then adjusting this front one is a little bit easier because this one just slides better for me. So that's how that works. Now with the track for cutting off doors, you've got two options for saws. Uh, probably more than that, but I have two options for saws. I have the Festool HKC, and then I have the TSC 55, which is probably my favorite purchase of 2019. I don't know why I waited so long. I procrastinated because I've had this HKC and it's very underpowered, so I just assumed that the Festool TSC would also be underpowered. It uses two batteries, and to my surprise, it is not underpowered at all, in my opinion. It works really well, and I really love using this saw. So the TSC55 is gonna be my go-to for cutting off doors. Because it's got more power, it's gonna go through easier. The dust bag works better, uh, and just all around easier saw to plunge in. You can use this saw, but I definitely recommend the TSC55. Okay, so let's start off cutting off these two doors. Long story short, the header was installed too low on these doors, which meant I had to put my jams all the way down on the subfloor. So I need to have these doors cut off an inch and a half above subfloor in order to clear carpet and have a little bit of space. To do this, I'm using a gauge block and just march, marking the height with my pencil. That gives me a reference point to check with my guide rail. There are a couple different ways you can do this. You can just set the guide rail by eye, or you can use gauge blocks on both ends of the guide rail. So here I've got a couple gauge blocks on the floor, and I'm using that to reference my guide rail in the proper location. And then you really need to double check that with your eye just to make sure they're lining up with your pencil line. Before starting to cut off the door, make sure your saw blade depth is set correctly. You don't want to have it set at full depth accidentally and plunge into something you're not supposed to but pretty easy to do this. Just control the saw well with, with your hand. Make sure it's firmly being pressed against your guide rail and it's actually pretty easy to do this. Now just using the gauge block on single doors is uh, definitely not a big deal. However, on double doors, you really need to be careful to make sure that the inside edge of both doors where they will meet together in the closed position, that you're cutting that off evenly across the bottom. So here I'm making sure that I'm on my pencil line so that whenever these doors are shut, they're cut off to the same length in the middle. This may seem like a really sketchy way to cut off doors, but it's honestly not too bad and it's really quick. The main thing is to make sure that you're set up with your body positioned in a way that you can maintain constant pressure between that saw and the guide rail. That's gonna prevent any kind of jumping or issues as you're making your way through the cut. So you might be wondering or thinking to yourself, Spencer, what are the advantages of cutting off a door this way versus the traditional method of popping the hinge pins, removing the door, throwing it on some saw horses and cutting it off um, with a track saw or even regular circular saw. 
For one thing on this house, I had M-Tech ball bearing hinges with that nasty grease on the inside. I'm not even sure if you're supposed to pop the hinges on those, pop the pins on those hinges or not, but I knew I didn't want to do that if I didn't have to on this house. Next reason here on this house, main level, I had all eight foot doors. Who wants to try to take off eight foot doors and then reinstall them? That, uh, that can be a really annoying task to get things lined up again and carrying around eight foot doors just isn't fun. Then there's the issue of damage caused while removing a door. Oftentimes you pop the pins on the door and then you go to reinstall the door. You have to bang the hinges around to get things to line up so you can get the door back on. That can result in scratches and dents on the hinges trying to do that. Or I can ram the door into drywall or something else whenever I'm moving it around. So avoiding that was a win for this situation. By the way, on a side note, protect your knees. I've got the Snickers knee pad or Snickers carpenter pants on that have the built-in knee pad pockets. I don't know why I didn't put my knee pads in before I started this, but it definitely would have made this job better having those in. Here, as you can see, I am just eyeballing the track into position on my pencil lines. I'm not using any gauge blocks. You just need to turn your saw the right way. There we go. That's better. And just look how easy it is just to slice right through the bottom of these doors. It's quick, it's easy. Saul's got plenty of power. Wham, bam, you're done. Pop the track off and move on to the next one. So let's talk a little bit about the art of cutting off doors to the proper height, which is not discussed very much. So this is a part of every carpenter's job on new construction you need to make sure the doors are cut off at the proper height in order to give the flooring the proper clearances. I always shoot for 5 eighths of an inch above hard surface flooring. So you need to take your hard surface flooring, add 5 eighths to that, and that's the height you want the bottom of the door to be off the subfloor. Now for carpet, you're going to need the door to be cut off higher. It's going to need to be an inch and a half off the subfloor in order to give proper clearance for most carpets. You might be able to get away with an inch and a quarter, but it'll be tight and it won't allow any airflow underneath. So you wanna shoot for an inch and a half for carpet to be safe. And again, 5 eighths of an inch above hard surface flooring. So then the next question you might have is, does that require every single door to have to be cut off? And the answer usually is no. Um, in the area I work, we do not install flooring prior to trim, so we have flooring going in after trim. The flooring guys will cut off the door jams with a jam saw and slide their hard surface flooring underneath. So what I do whenever I know I'm going to have carpet on both sides of a door, I will shim up the jam whenever I'm setting the door so that I have an inch and a half between the subfloor and bottom of the door. For the doors that I install, I can use a half inch block and that'll make my door at the proper height and the carpet guys can tuck their carpet right under that jam in that half inch space and it'll look great. Now the downside to this is if you install your door jams a half inch above subfloor and you do not communicate correctly and someone ends up installing quarter inch luxury vinyl tile, you're in big trouble because all your jams are going to be too high and that is a big problem. So if you are going to block up your jams, you've got to make sure you know what flooring is going where. I block up my jams because I don't like cutting off every single door in a house, but I know other good carpenters who have gotten burned before whenever details change and they set all their jams down to the subfloor, cut the doors off at the proper height, and then that way whenever flooring goes in, they know the flooring guys have something to cut off and they're not going to end up with a gap between the jam and the flooring. The door may be a little high if something changes, but that is not too big a deal. Not nearly as big a deal as having a gap between the jam and the flooring. Another important note, 
let's say we have carpet going on one side of a door and quarter inch vinyl tile going on the other side of a door. That means I need to have my door an inch and a half off the floor. However, my jam needs to go almost all the way down to the subfloor to make sure the flooring guy has something to undercut on the jam. So in that case, I need to set my jams down and just plan on cutting off the bottom of the door to make that type of situation work. Here's a close up view of a door where I blocked it up a half inch for carpet on both sides of the door. So you can see how my jam's high there. My base is up three eighths. It's not a big deal because the carpet's gonna tuck underneath that and it's gonna hide all that. But blocking up my jam a half inch gave me an inch and a half of clearance between the bottom of my door and the subfloor here. And that's what I need. So if I can achieve that half inch while I'm installing the door, that saves me all that time of cutting the door off later. Well, one thing I want to make note of is if this festool, if this festool handle was fixed, it would not work in certain situations because it would hit the jam or whatever, but they have made it so that it rotates up, which is really handy. So I can put this track on this door here put my blocks underneath the track and then with it in the up position I'll just squeeze it tight and then that's no issue now in this case this door will pivot all the way open so I could have tilted this over but uh, it'll work good like this But thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you learned something. If you want to support the channel, you can purchase these tools through the links in the notes under this video. That helps me a lot and I appreciate it. Um, any questions, let me know in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.